today on this St. Patty's Day. It's a beautiful day in the valley up here. It's the start of spring for sure. So I'm going to start with down by the Sally Gardens. So this one is set to a poem by William Butler Yeats. He was a very famous Irish poet, and this poem was published in 1889. The verse was subsequently set to music by Herbert Hughes to the additional Irish tune, The Moorland Shore, which is also known as The Maids of Moorn Shore. That was in 1909. So this is Down by the Sally Gardens. Thank you. Down by the Sally Gardens. That's a lovely tune and beautiful poem. Now I'll play a Piper tune, the Galloway Piper. This is also known as Piping Tim. It's a well-known traditional Irish folk song, commonly categorized as a drinking song. The lyrics tell of a great piper and it makes for a rousing sing-along. As is the case with so many wonderful old tunes, the person or people who wrote the Galloway Piper are forgotten to history, though it's known to have been published as early as 1740. I don't know if he was the predecessor of the Pied Piper, but this is the Galloway Piper, a traditional Irish tune. Thank you. 
Thank you, the Galloway Piper. So those were traditional Irish folk tunes. Next, the next one is the first one I'll play that's uh, it's probably the best known of all the American Irish ballads written by the famous composer and Irish tenor Chauncey Elcott. It was written for the 19, 1899 film, A Romance of Elthone. It was number one in the hit charts that year. Alcott wrote many other Irish songs, including When Irish Eyes Are Smiling. And uh, this particular arrangement is done by a pair of piano playing brothers and composers, Tim and Ryan O'Neill. They've, they, uh, if, if you Google them, if you like the arrangement and you like the style of music, uh, they have a website where they sell their CDs and they sell their sheet music. My Wild Irish Rose. Thank you. 
That was my wild Irish rose arranged by the O'Neill brothers. This next piece that I'll play is also arranged by the O'Neill brothers. Uh, this is a, uh, a, a, an instrumental solo, a reel, the coal miner's reel or Sonny Martin's reel. I like that one. That's a nice, lively piece. The coal, mar the coal miners reel, arranged by the O'Neill brothers. So here's one everybody knows, so you can sing along if you like. It's a long, long way to Tipperary. This is another of the American Irish songs. It was but it was written in England in 1912 by Jack Judge and Harry Williams. It didn't become very popular until the beginning of the First World War. Uh, then it was transformed into one of the most familiar marching songs of the world. It was number one in the charts in 1914 and 1915 and was featured in several films. It's a long way to Tipperary.
Thank you. I could see people singing along to that. It's a long way to Tipperary. For the next tune, the lyrics are from an ancient Irish hymn translated by Mary Byrne in 1905. And this hymn is sent to an ancient Irish melody. So it is a hymn, so it will sound churchy and religious. The tune is Be Thou My Vision. Thank you. In, a lot, in another life, I was an organist, so I love the sound of a big pipe organ. <laughs> Everybody knows Danny Boy, but probably very, very few people know all of the lyrics. So at least today, you will have the chance to follow all the lyrics for Danny Boy. It's a beautiful melody and a, a very, very sad tune. It's a ballad written by an another English songwriter, Frederick Weatherly, in 1913. However, it was set to the traditional Irish melody of Londonderry Air.
Thank you. That uh, version of, Lund of Danny Boy was arranged by Philip Keveron. And uh, many of the traditional Irish folk songs that I'm playing today are from his collection called the Celtic Collection. And uh, he's a very, very talented uh, musician, and he's arranged uh, lots of uh, different kinds of music. And everything I played from him is very um, artfully done and uh, enjoyable to listen to. Oh, did any of you get to see The Lord of the Dance by uh, the Irish-American dancer Michael Flatley? He uh, created, choreographed, and produced this, um, this production, this musical, this dancing musical, and he uh, was a star in the show. The music itself was written by Ronan Hardiman, I saw the show at the NAC several years ago, and it was a, an amazing, high-energy, beautiful display of high-stepping Irish dance dancing with beautiful, tall, long-legged, red-headed Irish women. <laughs> now, it's also um, that one of the tunes in it later on is an old Quaker tune and hymn. And it also appears in Aaron Copeland's Appalachian Suite. So this is Lord of the Dance.
I love that tune, The Lord of the Dance. Kitty of Coleraine, it's a light-hearted, fun, famous Irish folk song, which is believed to have been written as a poem by e Edgar Lysalt, 1763 to 1810. He was a lawyer by profession and also a songwriter and noted wit. And uh, pay attention to the words, because the, the lyrics are very cute and uh, humorous. Kitty of Coleraine. Thank you, Kitty of Coleraine. The next piece I'll play is a, a song called The Lark in the Clear Air. So the tune for this was originally the Irish folk song Kathleen Nolan, which is believed to be from the early 19th century. It was also known as the Taylor's Son. That was the music. The lyrics were from a poem by Sir Samuel Ferguson, who after searching for a long time, chose this music as the perfect melody for his poem. It's just a gorgeous tune and beautiful lyrics. The Lark in the Clear Air, arranged by Philip Caverin.
Thank you, the lark in the clear air. To Ralura Ra, that's an Irish lullaby. It's a classic Irish American song. It was written in 1913 by James Royce Shannon. The original recording of the song was by Chauncey Elcott, a very famous uh, American Irish singer, songwriter, and performer. It peaked at number one on the musical charts in 1914. The song was bra brought back to prominence 40 years later by Bing Crosby's performance in the 1944 film Going My Way. Crosby's single sold over a million copies and peaked at number four on the Billboard music charts. That's an Irish lullaby. A beautiful, gentle tune. That's an Irish lullaby. Diane, don't dance to this unless you've got your doctor's permission. The Irish washerwoman is a traditional jig known to have been played throughout the British Isles and in North America. Although usually considered an Irish tomb, some scholars claim that it is English in origin derived from the 7th century Dargison, the Irish washerwoman, and boy will her clothes be clean.
those clothes in the dryer now. <laughs> That's the Irish washerwoman. She can do my clothes anytime. Here's another very popular American Irish tune. It was sung by Ronald Reagan and uh, Brian Mulroney at a at a summit in Canada, I think in the 90s, when Irish eyes are smiling as a light-hearted song in tribute to Ireland. Its lyrics were written again by the famous Chansey Alcott and George Graff, set to music composed to Ernest Ball. So this was written for Chauncey Alcott's production of the Isle of Dreams, and Alcott sang this song in the show. It was first published in 1912, at a time when songs in tribute to a romanticized Ireland were very numerous and popular, both in Britain and the US. It was number one in the charts in 1913, and during the First World War, the famous tenor John McCormick recorded the song. When Irish eyes are smiling. <laughs> Molly Malone, also known as Cockles and Muscles, or Dublin's Fair City, is a popular song set in Dublin, which has become its unofficial anthem. A statue representing Molly Malone was unveiled on Dublin's Grafton Street during the 1988 Dublin M Millennial Celebrations. A lot of these old, old, old Irish folk songs go back hundreds of years and they um, portray a bygone time with activities that you don't see nowadays and this is certainly one of them. I don't think if you go to Ireland nowadays you'll find somebody going along the streets with a, ca a cart selling cockles and mussels. But uh, a long time ago you would have.
Thank you, Molly Malone. Again, arranged by Kevin Philip Keverin. Gary Owen, also known as Gary Owens, is an Irish tune for a jig dance. It was selected as a marching tune for Australia, British, Canadian, and American military formations, including General George Custer's 7th Calvary. Calvary. The song emerged during the 18th century when it was a drinking song of rich young roisters in Limerick. And uh, you might guess that it's a drinking tune from the lyrics. Gary Owen. Thank you, Gary Owen. I hope you were, had your glass of green beer for that one. The Last Rose of Summer is a poem by the Irish poet Thomas Moore, written in 1805. He wrote it while staying at Jenkinson Castle in County Kilkenny. The poem is set to music written by Richard Alfred Milliken. But tis the last rose of summer, another sad, poignant, beautiful Irish folk song.
Thank you. So the last piece I'm going to play, The Wearing of the Green. It's an Irish street ballad lamenting the repression of supporters of the Irish Rebellion. Not of 1960-something, but of 1798. It is to an old Irish air. Many versions of the lyrics exist, this one being the best known by Dion Boccio. The song proclaims that they are hanging men and wen women for the wearing of the green. The Revolutionary Society of United Irishmen adopted green as its color, and supporters wore green colored garments and ribbons. In some versions, the green being worn is a shamrock rather than fabric. The wearing of the green. A nice tune to end on. Thankfully, it's a little more peaceful today over on the Green Isle. So, thank you all very much for participating, especially for Yvonne for hosting the performance and Stuart for operating the slideshow. There's a lot that goes on behind the scenes <laughs> that make it go smoothly, and also to Melanie and Diane for their help. Um, I'll mention that uh, the last concert was a fundraiser for the Pembroke Regional Hospital, and we raised uh, nearly $1,700 for that, thanks to the per generosity of, the, um, of our listeners and participants. Um, so mm -hmm. if you want to contribute, you're more than welcome to. Uh, the donation link is in the email, and I think um, Yvonne has put the link in uh, some of the chats as well. And I welcome feedback, suggestions for future music. You can email me that. And the next Zoom piano concert will be Thursday, April 25th, 1.30 to 2.30. And I'll play a wide variety of music that I haven't uh, played in previous concerts.